we're back again and today I'm continuing my series on click and its ability to call large language models. Today we're going to be focusing on Google Gemini and I'm specifically going to be looking at the Gemini Pro model. Folks, this stuff just can't get any easier. All you have to do is go to their AI studio and you can see the link right here and you just say, hey, I'd like an API key. For right now, it's all free so that you can play uh, with this, which is what I did. When you create it, it's going to give you a key um, and let you know when you created this. You can go in and delete these things. And it gives you this really, really simple user interface um, in terms of how you can call this through a URL. So super simple API gives you the contents and all you do is slap in your API key. I mean, they can't make this stuff any easier. Now, as you know, ClickSense, I can go in and I can call any URL I want. So I could create a REST connector. And in fact, I went ahead and got started with that. But when I create the REST connector, man, I had to press a button um, that would then refire and reload my data. And that's not really what I wanted. I needed a server side extension like our other LLMs where I could ask a question. Hey, fantastic. I do press a button. But if I make filter selections, I want this thing to be fired automatically with my new data that I've now narrowed things down to. So not only are we going to be asking a question like here, write a story about a magic backpack, yay, I'm actually going to be passing it data from my ClickSense application. Now, what I ended up doing was calling a click automation. And at the very root of this, when I call this, I pass it a body. I'm calling a post example in my click automation. And then I can pass things just as the body. So I pass it the information I want. And then I simply call. This is their API. So I call their general language. Google Gemini Pro is the model I'm calling. I want to generate content. I pass it my key. Simple post method, I pass it exactly their framework, their little JSON body there, and I pass it the text that I passed in. The result comes back to me. I take that result. You can see here I'm doing a little bit with variables where I capture it because sometimes the questions that you ask, the answer is going to include, um, uh, you know, single quote marks and things that might throw off the display of it. And so I want to strip some of those things out and replace those special characters and then I simply return that output. So it's the output that came from Gemini. I just clean it up a little bit to make sure that there's no weird text characters that are going to mess up the answer. But, you know, gosh, since I'm in the automation anyway, I might as well kick things up a notch, right? Let's take advantage of the fact that we're using the click automation. And gosh, you know what I decided to do? I decided to pass two parameters. Instead of just passing the text, I also pass to the body of the automation the user ID, who's logged into ClickSense. So I get their name, and then I call a second time. I call the same API, same API key, yay, same contents, but I say, give me a funny quip about how great a question and include the name. And so I pass it the name. Then I call the same URL that you just saw on the previous automation, and yay, I get those answers. I clean the answers up and I pass the output. Not only am I passing the results from my actual prompt that have my data as part of it, I want to pass this little funny quip just so that you can see what that would look like. Well, gosh, oh man, if I'm in here anyway and I'm, and I'm already spending the time and you're spending the time to watch this, I mean, we're, we're like into minutes here. I might as well, what if I, gosh, what if I took that data and stored it in an infinity form? And so I could not only return the results to the screen, but they could be stored so that this is crazy. I could then on a form on my screen collect users input. Because what I'm asking for is usually advice. And so I could capture the question. I could keep a history so that I could see my chat history. I could keep a history of the answers. And then I could give the user an input to say, hey, what do you think about the results? Was, it, was this good? Should we follow this advice that we got back for Gemini or shouldn't we? And, and the whole point here is, if you're going to be in an automation anyway, you could go do anything else that the automation does 
as well as just calling Gemini. But Gemini is why you're here. So let's go ahead and jump into the application. I'm looking in here in data, and this data comes from our beer distribution company that's global, and, and we sell lots and lots and lots of beers, you know, worldwide. Yay for us. And we need to get some information. So I can look at the information visually here. Yay, I can see our billings. I can see profits. I can see it by division and by organization. I can see it graphically by customer if I want to be able to see both dimensions, hey, which organizations for which divisions were making most of the money, I can look and I can tell those things, those answers, right? Click will give you the analytics answers. It's the other things where it's more complicated, right? I want a holistic view. Give me a summary of how we're doing by office. And what Gemini does here, hey, look at there. It's a, such a magnificent question because it's a question of epic proportions, right? So here's where that funny little quip comes into play. And it can break down each of our divisions and then show me by location how things are doing, right? Yes, I could get there if I click and click and click and click and click, but I might as well have Google Gemini Pro just generate this narrative for me, which I love. Now here's where things really pay off. If I make some filter selections here, you'll notice that the Gemini Pro automation is automatically going to go out with this data set now of just the brown ale, just pale ale, and just stout, and get me new answers. So now I'm only looking at brown ale, pale ale, and stout, and things get narrowed down. Hey, look at that, man, because it was a Q-tip top notch. Yay! We'll call it a click Q-tip. Um, and if I change back, it'll replace that answer. And so the neat thing is that it, this is related to the data that's on the screen. Well, if I were looking at this and I see the screen, I say, wow, our brown ale is crushing it. Yay. But maybe what I'm asking for is why people might choose brown ale over other things. G give me some things to think about because I see the numbers. I don't doubt that these numbers are right. They're fantastic. But I may need to be asked, why? Like, why do people prefer brown ale to the other types of beers? Is there a logical reason that we might be selling more of this, other than the fact that, you know, we have good-looking salespeople that sell the brown ale? Who knows, right? Um, that's fantastic. Hey, look at my cool little clip here. Man, it's got a taste profile. It's got versatility. It could be food pairings. It's got health benefits. A lot of really great information that I may not have known as an analyst. The beautiful thing is this is just advice. I could ask these same questions of any of the good friends I have, and that's the whole point. Think of your LLM as another friend that you would ask the same types of things to, but they're really meant to make you think and, and prompt you to do some um, additional work and augment the answer. Right now, imagine, imagine... If I had used that last automation and I showed you the history and now I could type my thoughts on these things, that would be amazing, right? Well, let's go ahead and keep looking at our data. And I'm looking at, well, man, wait a second. Brown Ale was crushing it in billings. But as soon as I look at profits, I see that Pale Ale is way out in front. And Brown Ale is not making very much profit. We're only making 72 million profit on 221 million dollars in billings what is going on there right well that's the kind of question that i would ask for advice on right what might be some reasons that we're not making as much profit on brown ale considering we sell so much of it now i need the answer to that right i'm not asking it to sum things up or give me totals or which customers did which i'm looking for advice from somebody to help me drive the performance of my global beer distribution company, right? And so, man, these are great. You might have a high cost of comp production, competition, inefficient distribution, a lack of differentiation. Um, it might not be differentiated enough from other beers in the market, might have poor marketing, right? Again, great advice. I, I love the answers that come back. Here's where the rubber meets the road, right? Those are very generic. You saw originally the questions were about the data I was passing. Now what I'm going to do is pass in a question. 
can you tell me some cultural tell me culturally why we're selling so much brown ale where we do and what other cultures are similar that we could start selling it to right i want advice about the data that i actually have as well as suggestions of how i can make more money selling it and so i'm going to pass that question on to gemini and hopefully it gives me a great answer like it generally does hey Here's the reasons why you probably sell this. In Germany, there's a strong beer culture that prefers multi full body beers. Frankfurt's a financial hub with a large population of affluent consumers who enjoy premium beers. Hey, in Denver, where we're selling tons and tons of this, craft beer renaissance is a growing appreciation. It's a beer-centric city, and it explains why I'm selling so much, which I do sell into those cities a lot. But this tells me why I'm doing it. We always end up in analytics wanting to ask the question, why? This is some great advice. But by the way, here's some other cultures that have similar beer consumption patterns based on the culture. Belgium has a strong beer culture with a variety, a variety of this. They got major beer producing. They're a global reputation for high quality beers. The Czech Republic, Austria, Poland, and Netherlands. Guess what? I'm not selling into any of those. Right? In a few seconds here, asking Google Gemini, I may very well be on to gold in knowing what new markets to go into. So fantastic right and and what i'm what i'm asking these questions for is to try to help you understand where would you use google gemini and don't think about doing it for math like give me the total of this right we all know that's not the best thing that large language models do they do better for advice on questions like that now i'm going to take a look at my data right before I ask this question, I want you to understand, I don't really run a global beer distribution company. We are not involved in this in any way, shape, or form. This is literally data straight out of SAP's IDES test database, and I've kind of faked, I've changed IDs into putting names onto things. So there, there's an ID for what that division is, 007 or something, for pale ale and a division for brown ale. And they're just IDs. I put names on them to kind of make a nice story and make it look like a beer distribution company. So understand, th this is not real data. This is not from any of our customers. This is not clicks data. It's simply there. I want to ask it a question, very current language. Is there anything that looks sus in our data? And could that be considered criminal? I might ask that same question as, do we have any data quality issues in our data? If I was on a governance team, that might be the question I ask. But I want you to see how fun you can ask the questions and how um, uh, Google Gemini Pro will respond. Hey, here's some suspicious data. You got zero dollars in billings, but you got a negative net profit for this beer in this location. Uh, that could suggest you've got some problems going on there um, that, that's kind of suspicious. Hey, you had zero dollars in billings but a high net profit. Uh, that's highly unlikely and, and that means that we generate profit without occurring any expenses which could never really happen. Um, and man, yeah, that thing, that could raise some criminal red flags, right? <laughs> you might have some revenue recognition problems. Um, one of the times that it said, hey, you know, you might be using this as money laundering because it was making so much profit in one of them and it had no expenses. Like, no, 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 we're faking the data here. And then it gives you some inv and some um, recommendations of what to do to check into this. Right. And so very legitimate kind of thing that someone might need to ask. Super fun way to do it. You're looking at the data, but as you're doing this, you're like, man, I'm scratching my head because something just doesn't seem right here. You might ask that question and you might get some advice as to what to do next. Hope that you've enjoyed this. I'm going to go off and keep playing here. I'm going to end the video, but I'm going to keep playing with my Google Gemini because, man, some of these crazy things, man, this was a roller coaster uh, making you scream with excitement. Have a great day.